Welcome to Philotti Maths. Fighting problems one step at a time. Hello and welcome to Philotti Maths. Today we're having our second lesson on differentiation. If you haven't seen part one, then make sure you click the link in the description to see that. Now part two is going to be slightly harder because we're going to have fractions involved, so brace yourselves. Let's get started. Okay, we've been asked to find f dashed of x when f of x is equal to, and the first one is x to the 4 plus 5x squared. Now in order to differentiate that, we need to remember our basic rule of differentiation up here, which is that if f of x is equal to x to the n, where n is just any power, then f dashed of x is n x to the n minus 1. So in other words, we basically bring the n down, which would become here, and then we subtract 1 from the power to become n minus 1. Okay, we're going to use that rule in this example here, and we're just going to treat these two terms completely separately and just add them together at the end. So, how do we differentiate x to the power of 4? Well, this is the same as this, but with n is equal to 4. So we're going to bring the 4 in front, which will be 4x, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the power. 4 minus 1 is 3. So x to the 4 differentiates to 4x to the 3. OK, the next term now. We're going to copy the plus. And remember, 5x squared really means 5 multiplied by x squared. So we're going to write 5 times, and then we're going to think about how we differentiate x squared. Well, x squared, this is when n is 2. So we're going to bring the 2 in front, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the power of x. So it would be x to the 2 minus 1, which is 1. OK, we've differentiated this now, but we can simplify it a bit before we give our final answer. Now, the first term is as simple as we can make it, so we're just going to leave that the same. But this second term, because we've got 5 multiplied by 2, we can change that to a 10. And we don't have to write the power of 1, because anything to the power of 1 is just staying the same. So this is just simply x. So the final answer is 4x cubed plus 10x. Right, the second example is getting a bit harder now, because we've got fractional coefficients. But it works in exactly the same way. We're just going to focus on the first term first, differentiate that, and then do the second term afterwards. So, how do we differentiate an eighth x to the power of 8? Well, remember, this really means an eighth multiplied by x to the power of 8. So we're going to write the eighth times, and then we're going to think about how we differentiate x to the power of 8. Well, x to the power of 8, this is when n would be 8. So we're going to bring the 8 down in front. So it would be 8x. And then we're going to subtract 1 from the power, which would be 8 minus 1, which is 7. OK, that's the first term differentiated. So now let's move on to the second term. We're going to copy the plus. And now, really, this means 2 thirds multiplied by x to the power of 3. So we're going to copy the 2 thirds times and then we're going to think about how to differentiate x to the power of 3. So, x to the power of 3, we're going to bring the 3 down in front, 3x, and then we're going to subtract 1 from the power. So 3 minus 1 would be 2. OK, so we've differentiated it now, but we need to simplify it before we give our final answer. So this first term, we've got an 8 multiplied by 8. So because we've essentially got a divide by 8 multiplied by 8, these cancel out to simply become this 1 left over. So this is just going to be 1 x to the power of 7. And then we've got plus, and similarly we've got 2 divided by 3 times by 3. So the divide by 3 and the times by 3 cancel out, just leaving the 2. So this is simply 2, and we've still got the x squared at the end. OK, and then finally, we don't have to write this 1 here, because this is just simply x to the 7. So this is x to the 7 plus 2x squared. Finally then, we need to differentiate 3x to the 5 minus 7x squared. So we're going to start with the first term here. Remember, this really means 3 multiplied by x to the 5, so we can write 3 times. And in order to differentiate x to the power of 5, we're going to bring the 5 down, so it become 5x to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 4. So that's the first term done. Now, because we've got a minus here, we're going to copy down the minus. Previously we had plus, so that's why we wrote the plus, but here we've got the minus. Now the second term, this is 7 multiplied by x squared, so we're going to write 7 times. 
And to differentiate x squared, we bring the 2 down in front, so it would become 2x to the power of, we subtract 1 from the power, 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so we've differentiated it, and now to simplify it. The first term, we've got 3 multiplied by 5, lots of x to the 4. 3 times 5 is 15, so this is really 15x to the 4. And then we've got minus 7 times 2 is 14, so we've really got 14 x and we don't actually have to write the power of 1 because anything to the power of 1 is just itself so this is our final answer right we've got three more examples here to finish off this first one we've got to differentiate a third x to the power of 4 minus 2 ninths x to the 3 so a third times x to the 4 let's put that multiply in and when we differentiate it we're going to get a third multiplied by whatever we get by differentiating x to the power of 4 now x to the power of 4 goes to 4x to the power of 3 because we bring the 4 down in front and subtract 1 from the power. Okay, now the second term. We've got minus, so we're going to copy the minus. And this really means 2 ninths multiplied by x to the 3. So we're going to write 2 ninths multiplied by and then we're going to differentiate x to the 3. Now x to the 3 differentiates to 3x squared because we bring the 3 down in front here and then we subtract 1 from the power to become a 2. So we differentiated it, and now all that's left is to simplify this. So, the first term, we've got a third times 4. So that's going to equal 4 over 3, x to the power of 3. Because if we multiply a number by a fraction, we simply multiply that number by the top of the fraction, and then 1 times 4 just becomes the 4 here. So that's the first term. The second term, we've got minus 2 ninths multiplied by 3x squared. Well, 2 ninths times 3 is 6 ninths. So, we've got 6 ninths x squared. The reason that's 6 ninths is because the 2 here on the top of the fraction multiplies by the 3 to get 6. Okay, we're nearly there. We just need to simplify these fractions now. 4 thirds we can't simplify because 4 and 3 don't have any common factors, so that stays the same. So we get 4 thirds x to the 3. But this fraction here, 6 over 9, that does simplify because 3 goes into both 6 and 9. So we can divide both the top and the bottom of the fraction by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this fraction becomes 2 thirds. And we've got the x squared on the end. So that's our final answer, 4 thirds x cubed minus 2 thirds x squared. Okay, in this next example, we've got to differentiate 6x cubed plus x to the 4 over x. Now, this denominator of x makes it a lot harder to differentiate because it means that this whole thing is not of the form x to the power of n, like all of our previous examples were. And the way we deal with that is to try and get rid of this denominator. And the best way to do that is to split this fraction up into two different fractions using these two terms on the numerator. So, here's how we do that. It's going to equal 6x cubed over x plus x to the 4 over x. Okay, now remember we haven't differentiated this yet. All we've done is split it up into two separate fractions. And the next step is to simplify these two fractions and then we're going to be able to differentiate. So, how do we simplify 6x cubed over x? Well, this x here really means x to the power of 1. So because we're doing x cubed divided by x to the 1, that means we subtract the powers. So it would become 6x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 2. Okay, and then we've got plus, and similarly we've got x to the 4 divided by x to the 1. So we're going to subtract the powers, 4 minus 1, it would become x to the power of 3. Okay, we're finally ready to differentiate that. So we need to calculate f dashed of x based on what we worked out before. So, how do we differentiate 6x squared? Well, this really means 6 multiplied by x squared. So to differentiate that, it's going to be 6 times whatever we get by differentiating x squared. Well, to differentiate x squared, the 2 comes in front, so we have a 2x to the power of 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So we don't need to write that, because the power of 1 doesn't affect x at all. Okay, to differentiate the second term, we've got plus x cubed. How do we differentiate x cubed? Well, the 3 would become in front, so we've got 3x 
and then we've got to the power of 3 minus 1, which would be 2. Okay, we've differentiated it, so now we just need to simplify this. Because we've got 6 times 2 lots of x, that's really 12 lots of x. And this second term we can't simplify, so that's just simply 3x squared. And that is our final answer. Okay, in this final example, we've got to differentiate 4x minus 2x cubed over 2x. Similar to this previous example, we're going to split this up into two separate fractions. And that would become 4x over 2x minus 2x cubed over 2x. Okay, and now we've just got to simplify these two separate fractions. This first fraction, because we've got 4 over 2, that becomes a 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so that's the numbers dealt with, and now we've got to look at the x's. We've got x divided by x. Well, that just means that they cancel out on the top and bottom of the fraction, and it doesn't leave us with any x's at all. Okay, that's the first fraction simplified. This second fraction, we've got minus, and then we've got 2 divided by 2, which means the 2's just cancel out. And then we've got x to the power of 3 divided by x, and really that's x to the power of 1. So because we're doing x to the 3 over x to the 1, we subtract the powers. 3 minus 1 is 2, so we're just left with x to the power of 2, or x squared. Okay, we're now ready to differentiate then. So we need to find f dashed of x. So let's look at this first term, we've got a 2. Well, how do we differentiate 2? Well, remember, when we differentiate any number, actually, it just becomes 0, so we don't need to write anything, it effectively just disappears. So we can just focus on the second term, which is minus x squared. So we're going to copy the minus, and then how do we differentiate x squared? Well, the 2 comes down in front to become 2x, and then we've got to the power of 2 minus 1, which is 1, which we don't need to write because x to the power of 1 is just x. So actually, this is just our final answer, minus 2x. Thanks for watching this lesson on differentiation, part two. Hope you've enjoyed. Part three is coming very soon, so stay tuned. See you next time. Have you suffered from a maths-related injury in the last four months? You're in the right channel. Welcome to Philotti Maths. Hello, and welcome to Philotti Maths. Today we're having our second lesson on differentiation. If you haven't seen part one, then check the link in the description and click it as well once you've checked it. See you later. Okay, and now we're going to need to combine... No, we're not going to need to combine that. <laughs> Finally then, we need to... <laughs> that sounds way too enthusiastic. Okay, thanks for watching this part two of differentiation. Let's do that again. I didn't expect to get you in the face. <laughs> oh, that was good though. You spit it over your face. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for watching. Yeah, much better. <laughs> He looks, he looks so unwell, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks like he's green. Like, he's really he's green. Like, yeah.